So you want to move from Fivetran to Databricks Lake Flow Connect. It's hard to say that, Lake Flow Connect. Anyway, um, and I know why. Like a lot of my customers that use Fivetran, the bill can be pretty high and they just raise their prices March 2025. So um, a lot of people might be thinking, well, what can we do that's a little bit different than just keep paying Fivetran a ton of money? And there are some other drawbacks with Fivetran too, and I'll cover those in this video. And I'll talk about the conversion process going from Fivetran to Lake Flow Connect. But yeah, I have customers spending five, 10 grand a month on Fivetran easily, easily. So yeah, it's you can rack up the bills because five chain charges per row and per row that you're syncing and so when you've got these really big data stores like yeah it can be a lot of money we we had to turn it off for one of our data stores just because we couldn't afford it uh, this is the architecture for databricks lake flow connect and what I wanted to point out is you have we're going to talk about the Salesforce connector right so you have a Salesforce account um, and you want to pull down data from your Salesforce in uh, implementation and you want to move it down into your Databricks medallion architecture. So you configure Lakeflow Connect to do it. And Lakeflow Connect is basically an API wrapper. Uh, when the Salesforce APIs change, Lakeflow Connect also changes. And that way it just kind of keeps you uh, up to date so you don't have to keep rewriting all these different API calls. That's the idea behind it. And uh, you just configure it, put it on a schedule, and it works. Fivetran is a little bit different. One of the big advantages of Fivetran is the last time I checked, they had 700 different data sources, a lot of different data sources. So if you want Salesforce or Workday or Dynamics or JD Edwards or Jira or, you know, Zoho or whatever, you know, there's tons of different ones. Um, you could just like give it your credentials and it will work. And, and that's one big advantage that Fivetran has because Lakeflow Connect only has a few data sources right now. I think they have SQL Server that they support and they support Salesforce. And I think they've announced Workday and Dynamics and a few others they put on the roadmap that people have talked about. So it's getting more and more, but um, they're definitely only hitting the big ones where Fivetran is really looking for the long tail of these connectors that it's bringing. And what happens is you tell Fivetran your Salesforce account information and Fivetran goes up to Salesforce and sucks down all this data through the Fivetran network. So the data first goes to Fivetran and then it goes to your Databricks implementation. If it's Azure Databricks, it's in your Azure subscription, right? So um, that means that it's not a direct connection you're introducing Fivetran in the middle of your architecture. And there are some drawbacks to that. Uh, sec Security-wise, you might have people that have a company policy that you can't put your data on another company's uh, network. Um, or even if you could, you have to go through legal and go through all this documentation to make sure that you understand that they're HIPAA compliant or PCI compliant and that they're obeying all the rules and that, that you know who's looking at your data and who has access and it's all audited and logged. So there's a lot of like ceremony and before the Fivetran deal can even get signed. And then once you go through that ceremony, um, you have to set up your network in an enterprise to connect your Azure Databricks or your AWS Databricks or GCP into Fivetran. And if your security guys are really, really big sticklers, that could be a problem because they might say, no, 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 SSL isn't good enough. So <clears throat> we want private link. Well, if you want private link, that means you're getting like, a, I believe they call it a Fivetran enterprise account. It's their premier account. Um, and it's a lot more money. So you have to go to the highest level tier of Fivetran. You have to get a private link set up. Um, and uh, then, you know, you've got a, a more secure connection than just SSL over the internet, but it's still um, very expensive. Uh, and getting the networking guy's attention at your company to get that set up and tested and working uh, is sometimes not very easy. So um, that could be a problem. And then the final problem is you just, the bandwidth, like you've got to pay for the bandwidth. So if your company is already bandwidth constrained, um, pumping all that data through Fivetran um, and again, having very particular networking might not be the easiest thing to do. Okay, so how do we set up Lakeflow Connect in Databricks? The first thing you need to do is set up a connection. And the way you do that is you go to catalog, click on catalog, and then click on external data. 
And when you do that, you see a whole bunch of connections here, if you have some. Uh, I just have one called Salesforce Dev. That was me messing things, uh, messing around with things earlier. But I can just go ahead and create a connection, name the connection like test. The connection type is Salesforce. Look at all these different connection types you have. Lots of different ones, but we're going to do a Salesforce one. Do, do, do. So it's that one. And we're going to click Next. And then sign in with Salesforce. Now, so here's a little bit of a difference with this. In Fivetran, when you have a Salesforce account, you only need an account that has API access credentials. Uh, so when we tried to reuse that account with Lakeflow Connect, it uh, squawked at us because what it wants is both API access and interactive access. And then what you do in Lakeflow Connect is you click this sign in with Salesforce and you use ideally a service account to get to Salesforce that has the credentials to all the different entities and objects that you need in Salesforce, has API access, has interactive access, and then Databricks saves that connection information here um, when you build the connection. And that's the first step to using Lakeflow Connect. The second step to using Lakeflow Connect is to go to this pipelines area down here in Databricks and then click on pipelines. And here you can create a pipeline. So if I say create an ingestion pipeline and it says, which Databricks connectors would you like to use? And I can say, please use the Salesforce one. And I can name it whatever I want, test name. And then um, I can choose like, where should you store the pipeline event log? You can set up your own catalog uh, for the pipeline event log. And then you pick a connection. So that connection that we just created in the last thing, you just click there and create the connection. And um, for the event log, I can put it anywhere, but uh, I'll just put it in a test schema, something, okay. And then create the pipeline. Okay, and then it connects using that Salesforce connection and it brings down all of the different Salesforce objects that you might want. So you can just kind of pick one if you if you want or pick as many as you need, right? We we bring down a lot of our company. And then we click next. And then then you choose the destination that you want for it. So we can say, yeah, put it in the Salesforce destination and then save and continue and this is what will build the pipeline. That's how you build the pipeline. Okay, I'm not going to build another pipeline because it's only one more step and then it just starts running and bringing the data down. What I wanted to show you is what happens once the data is being brought down. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to go to um, pipelines again and I'm going to go to an, an existing Salesforce pipeline. And what you can see here is all the tables that we're bringing down you can see how long it takes to bring the data down and how much data it's bringing down per run. So this is just our latest run. It didn't bring that much data down. And you can see if you go back to pipelines, account pipeline, it's just like the workflow where I can just pick any one of my runs, pick one, and I can see exactly what came down in that run and how long each run took. So if you've used Databricks for any amount of time, you're pretty comfortable with this uh, screen. And it's really easy to change one. So if you go back to pipelines and you pick an existing one, if you want to change it, you just edit the pipeline and you can say, OK, I want to change you know, five different tables. I, I want to add five tables to this. Just do five tables save and continue and those five tables start coming down so anytime somebody in the data engineering team says they need more salesforce data tables to bring down it's a, a pretty quick interface to go do that um, so there you go that's how you set up lakeflow connect um, okay so here's the big difference if you're migrating from fivetran to lakeflow connect so Fivetran does this thing where they automatically kind of normalize the data from all of its connectors in a similar fashion. So when it brings down this Salesforce table called case status, it separates the table name case underscore status. And then in these different column names here, master underscore label, API underscore name, and then you can see the data types there. When Lakeflow Connect brings it down, it there's a different set of columns because it's not keeping track of it the same way in CDC. And also, um, Lakeflow Connect does not normalize the data the same way. It kind of preserves it from the source, which in a way I can kind of understand because 
Databricks doesn't know you're using Lakeflow Connect to replace Fivetran. You might be using it to replace, you know, your own custom API thing, right? So uh, Databricks isn't going to just go ahead and rename all your objects to conform to Fivetran. So there's a little bit of this mismatch here where you can see it's camel case, capital S, capital O for sort order, and uh, no underscores, which means that if you have reports off of Salesforce or other pipelines or DBT, or you're doing some type of integration somewhere, all of those things are going to break if you just replace the Fivetran data with Lakeflow Connect. So what you need to do is do some normalization here. Um, and what I would do is just use an LLM to do that normalization. So I would do, uh, you know, show the DDL, the schema between these two tables, and then I would ask an LLM, assuming that this schema is the source and this schema is the destination, um, please give me the columns that they have in common and give me an insert select statement that uses the correct table names and then a convert that uses the correct um, data types. And you should be good to go and ready and to rock and roll and do your conversion and be in a good spot for um, migrating off of 5 and into Databricks Lakeflow Connect. Thanks. Have a great day.